Hi, this is Bob from Hummy Concepts, and today I'm going to talk about soldering and lighting. I've got my trusty soldering iron here. I had a viewer say, hey Bob, can you do a video on soldering? I'm intimidated by it. And I, I thought that was a good idea. So I'm going to talk about how to solder, and then I'm going to talk about a bunch of lighting things. Um, how to add lights to Tamiya MFCs, extra lights on the strings, um, how to solder light strings together, how to use an electronic switch, just kind of all the little things I've had maybe in some of my other videos, but I thought it would be good to have them in one place so when people ask me, I don't have to say, oh, go find this video and go to this point. So this is all about lighting. Let's get started. To get started on this uh, soldering and wiring, I just want to show uh, some of the tools that I use. First thing is I have a Weller WALC100 soldering iron. Pretty much any kind of soldering iron is fine. I keep a wet sponge down here to clean the tip. And this is one of my tools I use a ton. So that's the soldering iron. I use this electronic solder. This is Kester, but there's a million brands. And I buy it in rolls like this. Pretty straightforward stuff. This little devil is a, uh, this is an Excel third hand. It's just got some clips on it. I use this a lot also for my soldering work. So those are my three basic tools. Then I use a pair of, uh, of uh, sprue cutters. These are, I have two pair. I use, I have one pair, this really good pair I use only for cutting plastic parts off of the trees. And then I have this old Zuron cutter which I use for clipping electrical wire and stripping it. Um, I use that a lot. Wire. Big question I get all the time is wire. Uh, what gauge do you use? Where do you get it? Uh, I use 30 gauge. It's nice and small. Um, when you're doing a lot of wiring in a truck you want a small size. This I buy off eBay. I'll put a link in the description. It comes with several different colors. I, I go through quite a few of these. I've built a lot of trucks. But uh, stuff works great and uh, the size is right. And finally, this little tiny shrink wrap. Um, uh, I use a lot of this, a 16th inch, and uh, you'll see as we go through some wiring. So let me talk about the basic wiring. I'm going to start with, I've got a, a Tamiya MFC uh, wire harness here that I want to put four bulbs on instead of two. Pretty typical thing that I do. So I'll just clip these wires here and I'll wind up with a good old piece of wire. And the typical thing you want to do is solder these together. So that's the number one thing um, that uh, I do a lot of and that's what I want to show you. So in order to solder these together, the first thing I do of course is strip these and I just use my, my cutter and just pull a little of the wire casing off, twist it together to make it as small as possible, and then I do what's called tinning. And tinning just means getting some solder into the, into the wire. So I'll do that, tin that one, and tin this one, and that's all there is to it. Now if I was going to extend this, I would use um, my 30 gauge wire that I showed and just do the same thing. And I'm going to show you um, how to solder two wires together. So here's my wire that's stripped and tinned, and then I've got another piece here. This would be, for example, what I want to extend, and it's also stripped and tinned. So now I just touch the two wires together, and there we go. My next step will be to cut a little piece of this shrink tubing, and just slide it over, and then I have a heat gun here that I use to shrink it. And 
and there's my joint. So that's how I extend wiring um, on the uh, Tamiya trucks, any kind of wiring I want to do. Strip it, tin it, strip it, tin it, solder it together, cover it with a piece of shrink wrap. So soldering wires on motors is pretty much the same effect. What I'll do is I will put solder right on those tabs which is my way of tinning those tabs. Be pretty generous with that. Okay, and then my wires are already tinned. Solder's already worked into them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this solder here until it's molten. Hold my wire on it. And it takes a second because we've got a lot of solder here. And then my my wire is soldered onto my motor tab. Let me do the other side here. Do the same thing. I'll heat this blob of solder. Lay the wire on it. And it takes a second, but you can actually see the solder flow up into the wire. And there we go. A couple wires soldered on. That's how I wire motors. I don't like that solder joint on that second one so let's let's take it off take it off I just heat it pull it off solder it again I'll heat this there we go simple as that so there's a wires on my motor soldered on so let's go back to adding LEDs to um, MFC light strings. So here's an MFC string that has got the plug on it, it's got a piece of wire on it, and it's got two leads coming out of the end. Now on an MFC, these plug in here. Notice I don't have any power connected to this. Make sure when you have things like loose wires and plugging things in, you never have power hooked to these. So um, the negatives are always on this side facing out. In this one, it happens to be the negatives black and the positives red. Now that's not always the case. MFCs come with all kinds of different colored wires. Here's a here's a blue and a yellow one, for example. Now. You might think blue is negative. It probably is because it's the darker color. But if we plug it in, yes, blue is on the outer side, so it's negative. And LEDs uh, typically come marked. Uh, the ones I sell have a resistor built in, and the negative lead is always black, and the positive lead is always the color of the LED. So red LED, it's a red lead. So to extend this Tamiya MFC, we're going to want to ex to or to add this to the Tamiya MFC, we're going to want to solder the two reds together and the two blacks together, and that would give us one bulb. But what I'm doing here is I'm setting up tail lights for a grand hauler, and the grand hauler bumper has got four spaces for five millimeter tail lights in it. So I'm going to solder four of these together and solder them onto this string so that my MFC will now light four bulbs instead of the two that I clipped off. So let me show you how I do that. So what I've done is I've stripped all the ends of these LED wires. Um, I stripped them extra long and I did not tin them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these reds, four of them because we got four LEDs, and we'll put them together and then we will twist them together take my handy little third hand here and now I'll tin it so now I've got one nice tinned wire 
that I'll be able to solder on here. And I'm going to do the same thing for these black ones, negative ones. We'll put them together here. We'll twist them. And then we'll tin them. Once I'm done tinning it, I'll actually cut it off a little bit shorter. Okay, and now we're ready to solder these to the um, to the MFC single lead. Before we do that, we need to put a piece of shrink tubing on here. This is the small size. That way, when I solder these together, I can pull this up and I'll have it on there. And I can't tell you how many times I've soldered these together before I put that on there, and then I have to unsolder them and slide it on. Now, notice I used a small piece of uh, shrink tubing. But what I'm also going to do on this one is use a piece of this next size up. And I'm going to throw it on there. So I have a small size and a large size. So now I'll clip this in here. I'm just going to hit this with a little solder to make sure it's tinned well. And then we're going to solder this together. Now you can see I got a little blip of solder sticking out there. I'm going to cut that off just so it's smooth. Okay. Now the reason I put this big piece on is I can pull it up and it'll cover all four wires. So I'm going to pull this small piece up to cover my solder joint, get my heat gun and shrink that one down. Then I'll pull this larger piece down so it's kind of going over both of them like that and shrink it down. Now that gave me uh, four wires into one, a uh, nice clean joint you can see um, and, and of course the shrink wrap helps to keep this from bending which would break it now we'll do the same thing with the black one. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll just show this too. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut a piece of the small stuff, slide it over here, cut a piece of the large stuff, put it in my little clamp. You can see how this thing is just required for for this kind of work. Get some solder hot. Come on. Pull this one up over the wires. Pull this one up over the joint. And then shrink them down. All right, so there we go. There now we have four red bulbs hook to an MFC string plus these these are longer than the original um, string so they give me a little extra length which on grand haulers is really nice so now I can light up all four tail lights um, that's pretty slick now the string for the backup lights on a grand hauler Do this here. 
reverse lights, comes with one bulb. And in the Grand Hauler bumper, I've got a Grand Hauler bumper here somewhere. I think that's how we do. Yep, there's one right there. It has a space for three backup lights. So we're going to do the same thing here and clip this off and then take three white LEDs and solder them on here just the same. I will double check that this darker color is negative and it is, it's on the outside. So the blacks will hook to the gray and then the white LEDs have a white lead and they'll hook to the white. So I'm going to go ahead and solder that up. Well I've got my um, backup light string and my tail light string and I plugged them into an MFC here. Got a radio off to the side. And uh, I did that so I can test them. So I'll go ahead and turn this MFC on. And I have the volume off so that we can hear. And we'll just test out our strings to see how they work. So the first thing we're going to do is test out the tail lights. And you can see those work great for LEDs on one wire. And then the backup lights. Three LEDs on one wire. So that's how you can um, expand MFC strings. I showed how to solder these joints, how to cover them with shrink wrap, and uh, those are ready to install in the truck. Now, I have one other little trick that's pretty cool. If you have an MFC and you want to expand uh, it without soldering, you can get one of these little expander boards. And what this does is plugs into an MFC slot and then gives you several places to plug to me a strings into. So you can plug in the headlights here, plug this into the headlight spot, and then you can plug additional strings in. You'll wind up typically with a few extra strings when you do it to me MFC. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the headlight spot and we'll see how that works. So I plugged this little expander board into J13 which is the headlight spot and now I've got my headlights plugged into it plus another string with two LEDs. So when I turn on my headlights both sets come on and I didn't have to do any soldering and I could even plug in another set. Now, I, I keep getting asked how many LEDs can you put on a single circuit on an MFC and the truthful answer is I don't know. To me it doesn't publish specs on this. Uh, I have no doubt you can put a, you know, maybe 10 LEDs on a circuit. Um, but uh, I assume that uh, you get to a point where it just won't work. I wouldn't put on 50 and I would use an electronic switch for that. In fact, let's talk about the electronic switch. I'll show you how that works and how to wire it up. So here's an electronic switch. And what this little device is, is basically what it sounds like. It's an electronically controlled switch that plugs into your receiver. Now if you have a, an extra receiver channel, or two or three, you can use these switches and control them from the radio. What it does is it plugs into an unused channel. On this receiver we'll plug it into channel 6 here. Okay, Plugged into channel 6 and then it has two outputs, a positive and a negative, red and black. So we can hook an LED to this what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder this servo connector on here and then we can turn the lights on and off with the uh, radio. Now the advantage with this electronic switch is it'll handle a lot of LEDs. I think I calculated out using their their specs that it'll handle 200 LEDs. I probably wouldn't go over 100. I have personally used about 50 and it works just great. So if you have a lot of LEDs, this is a great way to do it in virtually any kind of model.
Well, let me solder this together and then we'll plug it in. Now on, uh, on the servo plug, I've got brown, red, yellow. Brown is negative, red is positive, yellow is the sense wire or the, the, um, uh, the sending wire from the transmitter. Sometimes they're uh, black, red, white. Same deal, black's negative, red's positive. So I'm going to solder the, the two negatives together here. And just for reinforcement purposes, I'll just go ahead and do that right now. now. Even though this is just a little test wire that I'm soldering up, I put shrink wrap on it. I am very picky about not having short circuits in my things that I make. Notice I remembered to put the shrink wrap on before I soldered it. Good deal, Bob. Do this one too. And so now I'll have a little uh, a little test wire for my electronic switch. Now on this, the yellow wire is not going to be used. You can just clip it off right here at the base. Or if you want to get tricky, you can lift a little tab underneath here and pull the whole wire out. So now this is ready to plug into my electronic switch. Just like that. And we can test it. Alright, so it's all wired, all plugged in. I have it plugged into channel 6, which on this radio is this switch right here. So, that now turns my LED on and off, and I can, like I said, put, I don't know, 50, 75 LEDs on it if I want. And if I had more extra channels, I could just use more electronic switches. Very simple little device. Uh, the only thing to warn you about on that is you have to have a full servo travel from 100% to 100% or it won't work. Uh, sometimes you even have to set your endpoints up a little higher. But if you have a channel that, that doesn't move the servo all the way from stop to stop, it won't work. So Anyway, so that's another great little way to add lights to your truck. So there we go. A um, little how to solder. Um, remember, Tin the wires, and then join them together. Use shrink wrap on all your joints, not only for strength, but to keep them from uh, shorting out. Electronic solder, 30 gauge wire, and don't forget this cool little expander board if you have an MFC and you want to expand it. I think that probably covers the soldering part. So that was a great suggestion from one of my viewers. I, uh, I like doing this. And now if you ask me a question uh, on my email and say, Hey, how do I, what size wire should I use? I'm just going to send you a link to this video. So anyway, uh, guys, I appreciate the thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe. Keep watching. We'll see you next time.